Hello and welcome to Pansanger Church. We're so pleased that you can join us wherever and whenever that may be. Um, and we hope that you find some refreshment and comfort and joy um, in spending this time with God. We've just started the first week of the summer holidays. And so I'd just like to um, invite you to pray um, with us, um, reflecting on the school year. So here's Helena leading us in prayer. At the end of this school year, we give thanks to God for all the teaching and learning that has taken place in our school, both in and out of the classroom, for the talents and gifts that have been shared and the challenges that have been faced, for the burdens that have been lifted and the hearts that have been healed, for the respect and care that has been given. We give thanks for the friendships that have just begun and for those that have grown. Amen. Psalm 66 says this, Shout with joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Amen. James is going to lead us in the song, O oh Lord, my God.
now from James chapter 2 verses 14 to 26 which is titled Faith and Deeds. What good is it my brothers if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that, and shudder. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham con considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in different directions? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Charlotte Nobbs joins us this morning from Tear Fund and she will be sharing with us how the charity has been putting into action their faith. Hello, my name is Charlotte Nobbs and I'm a Tear Fund volunteer speaker. I'd like to start off by thanking you for inviting me to speak at your church today. It really is a great pr privilege and a great delight. And we would also like to thank you for your generous giving and prayers with Tear Fund for the poorest of the poor. It really warms our hearts. And we are living in challenging times, aren't we? A global pandemic that's affecting millions. It's shaken our society to the core, changed so much of how we live. It's a dark time for many, and we know that it has been a dark time for many of you. It's affected so many areas of our lives, hasn't it? Our freedom of movement, our education, our children, our families, our health and our well-being, our mental health. On so many levels, our lifestyle has been challenged. And we want you to know that Tear Fund is praying for you. Once a week as an organisation, we pray for all our UK churches and our supporters. And our challenge as a church is to shine as a light in these dark times. In Isaiah 58 in the Old Testament, we're challenged and encouraged to walk in ways that please God. You see, Israel at the time had placed all their energies 
into the religious practice of God, but had completely forgotten to love. They had committed to fasting and to abstaining, but then left out the poor and the needy. They were known for what they didn't do rather than what they did do. Doesn't that challenge us too? But God loves us and he wants to point out these things to us so that we can turn back. So let's turn to Isaiah 58, beginning at verse 6. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them? and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. The same sentiment is reflected in our reading from James today. Do you remember that bit that said, suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food and if one of you says, go in peace, keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Can you hear what the Lord really desires, what really pleases him? It's when we love those who are in need. It's when we love the oppressed. It's when we love the poor that God says, that's true worship. I wonder now if I might invite you to draw breath and perhaps you're going to find this easy uh, by closing your eyes and bring to mind what you have experienced in this time with coronavirus. For me, it's been challenging and sad at times and definitely confusing. I wonder what about you? Now I'd like you to hold on to those thoughts of what you experience and have felt in the UK but this time I want you to imagine that you live in Cox's B B Bazaar. It's in Bangladesh and it's the largest refugee camp. It's the place that the Rohingya people fled to from Myanmar. They left everything behind and made it across the border to Bangladesh. Can you imagine what it would be like to arrive there, closely packed together amongst one million others? Can you imagine what it would be like when you hear that the first coronavirus has been confirmed in the camp? Social distancing is close to impossible. There's no medical health care on hand. There are limited, limited medical resources and there are no intensive care beds. I just wonder if at this moment we could close our eyes and we could pray for the Rohingya people. Father God, we pray for the Rohingya people in Cox's Bazaar. Come Lord and heal your land. Amen. Indeed, on the 3rd of April, Bangladesh's officials reported the first cases of coronavirus, the first case was reported in Cox's Bazaar. It's in an area where one million Rohingya people are living in that refugee camp. The Guardian says that the camp is more densely populated than most of our busiest cities. There's no space for social distancing and the tiny crowded, crowded shelters in which people live generally house about 12 people. And then on top of that, many shelters are sharing one toilet and the same water source. Healthcare is scarce 
and illness is already rife because basic things like clean water or soap are in short supply and often the refugees arrive with their health already compromised. We spoke to the uh, director of, for Bangladesh who said it like this. It's difficult to deal with complex issues as the resources are so few. The infrastructure is not adequate and the medical facilities are not adequate. People are out of their jobs, particularly the migrants, the daily wage labourers and the poor and the vulnerable. They are suffering due to hunger, unemployment and lack of health facilities. Here at Tear Fund, we believe God has called us to where the need is greatest, messiest, hardest and darkest. Where possible, we work through the local church, just like yours, that supports communities around them. So what can we do and what are our partners doing? Well, let me tell you, because it's good news. So far, we have given out 33,334 hygiene and sanitation kits We've given out 5,717 food parcels, 502 water stations, and we have delivered 91,326 hygiene messages. That's great news, but of course there are so many more people and communities to reach, and this is where we're asking for your help. So what can you do today? Well, first of all, we're asking the UK Church to join us in prayer. We strongly believe in the power of prayer to remember our partners and the communities we work in. And I know that we'll be praying later in the service. We're also asking that you might take action today. Your financial gift today can help people during this pandemic, like the stories we've heard from Cox's Bazaar. You can make a cash donation towards our coronavirus appeal. Let me tell you where your money might go. £15 would provide five families with life-saving essentials such as soap and disinfectant. £50 would provide health training or food support and food support, sorry, for three families for three months. And perhaps as a church you might like to give a combined gifts so £600 would provide a community of 200 families with a month's supply of life-saving essentials. You can give today by giving to www.tearfund.org slash COVID response. If you follow this link, you'll be asked what prompted you to give. Select the church service option, follow the instructions to look up the name of your wonderful church, this allows us to come back and say thank you to you personally and to let your church leader know how much of a difference you've all made. Let's conclude by praying together. Father God, we are really challenged by the verses we've heard today about how worship is about religious practices, but also it's about giving and sharing what we have. Father God, help us to remember the poor. Help us to be a light that shines in this dark time. Bless the Rohingya people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Charlotte. Let's reflect together on what we've heard by singing Light of the World, which James will lead us in.
video we will show three questions which Charlotte has asked us to consider and um, to help us to respond to her message this morning. And now let's pray together and Nicolette will lead us. Almighty God, our beloved and heavenly Father, we bow before you alone and we bless your holy name, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Lord, you are welcome here in our hearts, homes and nations. We thank you, Jesus, that your name is the name above all names. Not just a millimetre above, or a centimetre, or a metre, or a kilometre, but your name towers above all, and you reign on high. We offer you our lives afresh and we invite you, Lord Jesus, to come and have your way in us as your church. Lord, we thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your faithfulness, for your kindness, for your tenderness, for your patience, for your power and might for your authority. We thank you that you are sovereign over us. And we thank you, Lord, that you have a plan. Lord, we find ourselves praying in strange times, as we imagine many people before us have prayed. But Lord, you told us that difficult times would come. You warned us that there would be disease and famine. Lord, thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Lord, amidst our turmoil, our individual fears, worries and concerns, would you help us to keep our eyes on you and you alone? Lord, remind us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Remind us that nothing is impossible for you. Remind us that you have a plan for each one of our lives. Your eyes beheld our unformed substance and you hold us in the palm of your hand as indeed you do the whole world. Lord, we thank you so much for the message we've heard from Charlotte to live out our lives for you to give freely of what we have. Freely, freely we have received. Freely, freely should we give. Lord, give us the wisdom and discernment to know where and how to give, whether it's financially, through prayer or 
through practical support, whether it's locally or internationally. We ask you to prosper the work of Tear Fund's hands and indeed prosper the work of all those serving you. Lord, we think not just of the Rohingya refugees, but also the Uyghurs facing persecution in China, suffering so bitterly and finding it so hard to have a voice. Lord, would you move for the sake of your name? Thank you that there's no place so dark, no place so hopeless, that your light, hope and saving grace can't be found. Thank you that there is no life that doesn't matter to you. Lord, show us how to pray for those struggling in the refugee camps and in China. Raise people's awareness of their plight. Send out those you are calling to serve you in Bangladesh and China. Speak to your people, Lord, for we are listening and we're hungry for more of you. Lord, closer to home, you and you alone know what each one of us is going through. Thank you that you will meet each one of us at our point of need. Lord, where we're wounded or sick, we cry out to you for healing. Where we're fearful, we cry out to you, our rock on which we stand. Where we're grieving, hold us tenderly. Where, where we are in turmoil, grant us your peace. Lord, as you have scattered us throughout our communities, reveal to us in our streets and neighbourhoods those who need your love, your light and your hope. Lord, we ask quite simply that many people will be swept into your kingdom in the coming days, weeks, months and years offering up our prayers, not in any strength of our own, but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, name above all names. Amen. We're so glad you could join us today. If you're interested in our online live gatherings on Sunday mornings or throughout the week, please just email hello at panshangerchurch.com. I'd like to end our time together today with reading from Zephaniah chapter 3. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Amen.